<laughs> Welcome. It's August 2024 and Microsoft Power BI just released their August update. I'm going to go through the seven key releases in this update. We're going to go through this list. So let's dive into it. Uh, first, we're going to talk through how the preview feature for Copilot interactivity is officially released to general availability. Another key thing is going to be these new formatting strings. It's going to be both at the element, the visual, and the model level. I'm going to talk through all of those. There's an official release of individual dynamic subscription releases that we're going to go back and revisit. Those also uh, have a new feature enhancement to improve the uploading into OneDrive of your files. Uh, through a background refresh process, I'm going to talk through that. There's a, also a new data limit uh, setting on the visuals that's going to allow you to do a date limit filter. I'm going to show you how to use all of that. Uh, there's line enhancements to the legends that are released. We're going to go through those. Uh, and finally, there's a really cool visual from PowerViz uh, called like Power Filter. So again, we're going to equip you with this. We're going to dive into Power BI. If you find this valuable and you want to stay up to date with Power BI, hit subscribe, hit like. Now let's dive into Power BI. Let's go. All right. So here we are in Power BI. Again, what we're going to do is go through these seven key feature updates that are released in the August edition of Power BI. What you can do is follow along with this. So if you go to the description of this YouTube video, you can download this file. We're going to have multiple tabs. We're going to talk through these examples, look at examples. You can build things as well. A key thing is that if you watch this, you're going to understand everything that was released in the August 2024 update, as well as have links to additional videos and content. So let's go ahead and dive into this here. Let's get going. The first release is called, uh, they titled it, Ask Copilot Questions Against Your Semantic Model Preview. Well, this has been around for a couple of months, but they're still including it in this update. What's important to understand is that, uh, again, if you have the Copilot settings enabled in your semantic or in your service, you can use this capability. I have a video here, and I'll put it in the corner of the screen too, that will go through the details of setting this up. But at a high level, we're still going to give a demo. So uh, you don't need to turn the preview feature on anymore. That's kind of just what they're saying here. But at a very quick level, Copilot, uh, there's a new cool you know icon there. On the right-hand side of the pane, you can still click that. Let me move my picture to the other side. And you can just ask questions now. You can create content, you know, and add it to your to your report. So what is the net sales per month? And let's see if this works. I might not. Uh, but now it's working on it. And so I said, what is the net sales per month? Fat plans net sales per month. So then you can show reasoning. You know, I asked this. You can tweak it and do QA setups. You can add this then to the actual visual and drag it on there. It will kind of help you creating those things. Again, uh, this feature has a lot of stuff with it. Go to this video if you want to get a 30 minute demo on all the stuff pertaining to it. But overall, that's what they stated for this August release. Uh, this one's kind of a recap for that, but that's what they call it as a new feature. Now this next one, formatting strings, this is most certainly a new feature. So what I'm gonna do is break this into two parts. There's gonna be the formatting strings overview, and then we're gonna do a lab where I'm gonna show you these different updates. Again, you can follow this file or just watch it, but you'll understand from watching it too. So what this is saying is that there are now, there's now the enablement to control the labeling or the formatting of a numerical value across the model, the visual, or an element. I'm gonna to talk to you about what each of those are and show you a demo too. Um, but this is kind of their core picture for showing it. To understand it, let's just go into the lab. So here we are at the lab. There's a couple of links that you need to check out. First, for visual calculations, uh, there's a video that I spend a half hour going through all the visual calculation stuff. I'm gonna show you a little bit of it here, but to get more in depth with that, click the video at the top or this. We're gonna be utilizing some formatting strings. So there's links of how to use formatting strings. I'll put it in the description of the video too. But now let's look at it. So let's, let's talk about what this is. And here's the lab example. You can look at these tables, follow along. But this is, this is the gist of it. So first, I have something called model formatting. I'm going to show you what that is. If we look at the concentric circles, this is going to be the first, the broadest. And the way that it overwrites by preference is inside out. So element trumps visual, visual trumps model, and so on. 
So we're gonna be looking around at the same value formatted different ways uh, through all these visuals. I'm gonna show you what this means. So first, when we talk about model formatting, what that means is something we're kind of used to. So for this visual, I'm taking category net sales. Again, the data model is something I've used in many other videos. It's a Microsoft kind of standard data set, uh, sales for products over time kind of thing. So nothing complex there. But if we look at the calculation, on this right-hand side, this is considered the model. So within the model uh, for net sales, this is where you historically update things up in the top. So you can see in this case, just for testing purposes, I set the format of this to be decimal number for net sales, as well as then five decimal places. One, two, three, four, five. So that's gonna show up if you just drag and drop it. That's the core model level uh, formatting. That's what we're used to. They knocked it up a notch now with visual level formatting. This is a new tab, a new section. I'm going to show it to you. So if you create a visual and if you're in the build section of it or the formatting section, there's going to be uh, individual areas which are listed here, size, style that we're very familiar with. But then there's also general properties of the visual itself. This is where it's new. So if you go into properties, now there's this new section called data format. If you click data format, now we can pick a specific visual. In this case, I'll pick net sales because it's what's in this visual. And you can utilize uh, the formatting strings. And this is the link in the other video that I, I put on there that's gonna show you, here's the different kind of ways to use, you know, pound signs, dollar signs. But in this case, I set the visual level filter to be a numerical with two decimal points and including a comma. So that's gonna interact differently just for this visual. It's really valuable when you wanna create a semantic model that has one thing, but then maybe as a report developer, you wanna have different things. So this will do the holistic visual, all, all the places this value might come up in the visual, which is why it's in the general. Another thing is gonna be the visual calc. So what's important for this, and this is why it could be beneficial to watch this video, is if you, for visual calculations, I just clicked the new calculation button. Well, historically, it's been difficult to format these values. In this case, you can see I have a running sum. They show up as a little bit of a different view over here with this kind of icon. But if you click into it, you haven't been able to historically format it well. You can embed formatting strings into this kind of stuff, but it just hasn't worked out idealistically. So what this means is that as you add, and again, check this out. I go through every single visual calc if you're curious in this video. But what this update does as well is now if we look at the middle line like we just did, the middle circle, you can see that I did a running sum calculation. But for this one, I'm abbreviating it you know, by thousands. And so what you can do is the same or the properties, running sum. Now we can actually pick the visual level calculations in this section and apply additional formatting to them. That's new. I, I'm thinking they're gonna keep evolving this as well. Finally, something that we are, another feature is if we go deeper into it, it's gonna be the element level. So an element, you can think of it as like a data label or something specific within a visual itself, not the whole visual. So in this case, you can see the same value, but I put it, I prefix it with some text and change it up a bit. So in data labels, there's now a new section. If you go to a, if you scroll down to value, you can see that under display units, well, if you pick the section custom, now you can control, and you kind of have been able to do this as well, but it's just distinguishing the three levels. Really, the visual is the biggest one. But you can put a custom formatting code and preface as you desire. So this is the key update and understanding these three circles uh, for how you can do the new formatting strings that's out there. Well, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> so they call out dynamic per recipient subscriptions, generally available. And also that then when you create those subscriptions, uh, you can deliver them to OneDrive, which is generally available. Sometimes they go back and circle back on these updates that are, they've already released, but as, as opposed to being a preview feature, it's just been promoted to general availability. So that is the case for this. I have a video that's up at the top here for dynamic subscriptions. It's gonna show you a half hour video of all the steps you need to do to create dynamic subscriptions. Essentially, those are the types of subscriptions where Maybe you want you have a staff of 100 people and you want each person to receive their own individual report filtered for their name. Well, you can set this up to do it automatically. It will cycle through a list of values and send out files everywhere. You can email the files or now send them to OneDrive. 
So that's going to be the holistic idea with that. Okay, this update as well. I'll narrow this. This is a cool update. You want to go into, it's, it's a subtle one, but if you work in an enterprise environment and you have OneDrive, or maybe you all share your files, share, save PBIX files, sometimes it can take a while for it to upload and, and, it, and, it, and it just slows things down. You have to wait for the process to complete. Well, now if you go into file option preview features, going to saving to OneDrive and SharePoint uploads in the background, now you can save to OneDrive, save into your location, but in the background, it's gonna do the uploading process. So you don't have to wait. What that means, it's just gonna be so much faster for you. Um, so the first time you create it, it kind of makes this link to it, and then you'll be able to just utilize it and save it very easily. So check that out. Turn that on if you're using OneDrive. It's just only gonna help you. Okay, data limit. This is a new feature. I'm gonna show it with the lab as well. So at a high level, what data limit they say it does, and I'll show you the pros and cons of it because you need to understand how these things work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what's up here. The data limit is essentially they're, they're marketing it as an ability for you to put a single session per visual displaying only a certain number of rows of data. What I initially thought when I read this, I was excited because I thought it would just still calculate or aggregate across the whole data set, but just show a certain number of visuals. As an example on the top here, if you bring back a bunch of IDs, well, that takes forever to load. There's so many IDs that keep scrolling forever. So the idea of data limits applicable to something like this, it's just ID and a sales amount. But I wanna show you what's actually happening. So the way you enable these things now is if you click on a table and, or any visual that you have, filters on this visual on the right hand side, we'll do it this one now, you can go to more options, add data limit. So I've added a data limit to this one, which is just five. So it's only gonna show five rows. But the negative is that it doesn't uh, still calculate the whole thing. I was hoping it improved the performance by still using all the data, but only showing a certain number of rows, but it doesn't. It acts as like a top end filter against your data model. So for example, if we look at something and you say you click Power BI, well, there's gonna to be tons of sales for Power BI. Every single sales listed here, totaling $210,000 but maybe I don't wanna scroll through all this, but I need to have the sales number on there for some reason. I was hopeful that you could add the top or the data limit filter to this and still get the total of 210,000, but it doesn't. It filters it to whatever you have as the top 10. Or if you sort this in certain ways, it changes. So you can see this dynamically saying, here's the top, here's the top. So what it's good for is it's kind of, if you want to have that top N filtering happening is where you can apply this, but it is gonna change your data. But again, the importance of it is to know that it's there so it's in your tool belt of items you can use as you're building things. All right, let's move on to the next one. So legend formatting. They have been working on formatting. I have an example here, I'm gonna show it to you, uh, where we have more and more control over things like spacing, over things like color. But what this does now is previously it wasn't reflecting in the legend in this tiny little circle. It's a subtle detail if you're interested into it. So when you come into something like this and historically, I'll close this out and I will go to, oh, let's go to columns and series, power platform. So I have this set as yellow with a border. Let me just turn the border off. So this is what it's talking about. It's literally talking about this little circle where you might have created something where you've exploded the series, it looks kind of cool, and you really want to highlight like Power BI, so you turn this border on, it makes it stand out. Well, now it just adds a circle up here, and the same thing is going to kind of happen for tool tips if you add those icons into there is what it states. So it's going to be a slight formatting enhancement. Again, it's important for you to know that it's there so you can utilize it and just have the awareness of these enhancements. But there, that's what it is, a small detail to make things look a little bit better that way. Finally, there's a pretty cool free filter. Usually these extra visuals, even if you look at the update summary, they, they show a lot. And in the article, there's even more. But I typically don't like to use them because they require payments or you know they, they're not scalable. This is a pretty cool one. So. Again, if you're interested in adding new visuals, what you can do is 
within this section, if you click get more visuals, it will launch the marketplace and it will look like something like this. Uh, you can then search for uh, power viz and it will come up and you can see more information about it. You can download a sample, which I'm going to show you as well, but here's, here's a cool thing. So if you create just normal filter, say I have this right here, right, we'll do a demo product, product hierarchy. Let me add this and I'll turn it into a filter. Like that's typically there, which is on the left-hand side. Well, you can see, I can click down. Maybe I click access and it shows this or office like this. Well, this new filter, which is an example down here, we're going to build it. You can get something that just looks so much cooler with a ton of capabilities, filtering out blanks, hierarchical things. I'll show you more of it, but we'll go through a quick example. So here's one that I built where I'm selecting multiple things. The filter just looks awesome, but the experience for putting together is pretty cool. I haven't seen anything like this before. So let's look at that. Say I add product hierarchy and I want to convert this to the new visual, which is right here called filter. Well, if I click this sucker, it kind of list takes you through a series of prompts, which is neat. So it pops up. Do you want to have a canvas one or more of a pop-up? I'll choose canvas. Uh, multiple selection or single selection. Uh, let's do this one. We'll just do single for the fun of it. Uh, radio buttons, listing, check boxes. We'll do radio. Different colors, blue, green. Let's go with green. Done. And now look at this because I already clicked this here. Let me clear this filter. So now on the right hand side, I have a new cool looking filter that's still hierarchy. It's, it's counting the items. You know, there's no counts here. It's just all intuitive. Uh, and I can pick Xbox now and it filters it, it just looks cooler. But what you can do is actually click into this gear, into the advanced settings of it, and it will launch uh, a whole new different screen that will allow you to get more into the details of what the visual is doing. For some reason, mine's not pumping up, maybe because I have two on here, but it was, it was launching earlier. But what it looks like as well is even if we do this, <clears throat> this is cool. So if you download the file, uh, this is going to really talk you through all the different selections. I'm going to click through this fairly qu quickly so you can see, but there's like display modes, hierarchy style, keep items selected at the top, moving things to the top, selection settings. You can get into all the settings of these things, the hierarchical support, different, different options for how we want to utilize sectors, groupings, hiding things. You can see blanks are showing up here. Blanks are not showing up here. Default selection. You can default the filter to always come into something, which is great. So if you want to have that default filter setting, you can set that up here uh, and it will just, it will load up that way. Style, uh, again, more detail in styling. Maybe you want to have uh, italics, cell colors. You can set the colors very detailed. Title bar, you can obviously title it different ways. Image styling, if you want to get hardcore and load up images, you can do that. Conditional formatting as well, so you can see Maybe if things are, are the values above or below a threshold, import, export, you can even upload more theme settings and templates. Essentially this filter visual, uh, I have yet to fully unpack, but it's going to enable a ton of cool capabilities. So having known all that now that equips you with everything that's in that, this power BI August update. So dive into it. If you find this valuable and you want more content, just subscribe, hit like, and we'll keep creating it for you. You keep up to date with everything that comes out. So for now, take it easy. Enjoy. Later.